What's up everybody, this is Jay, and this video is about the future of Tariq and what to expect for Season 5. Remember to subscribe to my channel, click the little bell next to the subscribe button. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and support me on Patreon. Now, let's get into it. There's a lot going on with Tariq, and he pretty much made a mess of everything he touched in Season 4. Now, he's pretty much changed from the little boy that we originally saw when we first started watching the show. And he's even gotten taller and a little peach fuzz on his big ass lip too to make it seem like he's growing up in the world. But nevertheless, all he's done is make one childish mistake after the other and make matters worse for every single person he came in contact with in the show. He, now he's sitting there getting cleaned up after he pretty much killed Ray Ray, but after he killed Ray Ray, he caused two or three more problems. So it seemed like every time he tried to solve one thing, he made two or three more other problems in the, in the end. So one thing about Tariq is he's got a lot of ish on his plate that he gonna have to deal with come season five and i think it's gonna lead to only one possible outcome and i'll say what that outcome is in the end of the video now when we was looking at him and he was looking at himself in the mirror after what happened with him and ray ray we can pretty much see that he's a different person now that really was the last straw it changed him and pretty much it's no coming back from that now he's seen people get killed he saw two people killed previously in the show and now he has become the murderer and yeah he was trying to make everything right but in the end he's the one that made it wrong in the first place and that little peach fuzz on his lip that's trying to come that ain't nothing but dirt and he need to wipe that off because he ain't no man and he ain't ready for real man problems and so he actually brought his mother down this time with him, his own mother. And it's going to be a point where she's going to have to make a choice. Is she going to go to jail for him or is she going to let him do the time since he tried to do the crime? But he's so young and dumb, he might say, well, if uh, I got to go, I might snitch and he may bring them down. So you never know what he may do. Also, his dad. He brought his dad back into the life. The ghost been trying to get out of the life one way or the other ever since a uh, season, couple seasons ago. And so now with the death of Raina, that brought Ghost back into the life where, of course, he was on the war path, ready to kill people and do whatever it takes. To the point where even he got back with Kanan and Tommy ready to do dirt and take out Dre. We see, although he was still in contact with Kanan and he was making the phone call with Kanan, how does he really feel about that relationship? And how should he feel? I mean, you know, if it wasn't for Kanan, he wouldn't be in the mess that he was in. Now he has to take some responsibility because he chose to go with him. He got the warning uh, from Dre to leave dude alone but he never listened to Dre. Now, Dre didn't exactly tell him everything that he needed to know from Jump Street, but he does have to take some responsibility for that because in the end, it ended up with his sister dead. And how is that going to weigh on him as a young man or any man personally or woman or any person, period? How would that weigh on you, your twin sister's dead? Especially if it was something that had you had to do with it. And then on top of that, you saw it. How would that shape your life going forward? And also, what about his girlfriend, half-ass girlfriend, Destiny, with the with Rick James hairdo? What is she going to end up doing? How is that relationship going to play out? Especially when she finds out Ray Ray's dead. Is she going to realize, well, he was wrong for killing her? He was a bad dude. I'm going to leave it alone. Or is Tariq going to want to kill her as he feels like she set him up? Maybe he might not believe her when she says she didn't have nothing to do with it. What about Terry with that Aquafina water ass head? 
what is Tariq going to do when he finds out that his mama been cheating and lying with Terry and on the side paying that water bill? What is he going to do? How is he going to feel? At first he was mad at Ghost and felt that he was a liar when he found out he was cheating. What is he going to do when he find out his mama is in the same boat, in the same water? What about his little sister? Is he going to try to make up for where he went wrong with Raina? I mean, look at that big ass head. She got to look like a little Zika virus head. They might as well call her little Zika, little Zeke Zeke. Uh, look like she was scout. You know, that's his last sister. She's like the last of the Mohicans, you know, the last of the Motisa tribe. So is he going to try to protect her? We'll see. As far as TD Fakes goes, you know, he can be real charismatic. He may start preaching and hooping and hollering and trying to bring him to come to Jesus moment. Uh, we already know. He may break out a picnic at any moment because he got his buns on his back. I'm sure the back of his neck looked like a pack of hot dogs rolled up as well. So he may lure Tariq over to the Lord. Or maybe not. We'll see. What about what happened with Tariq and Jukebox? We already know that she's dead. But that was a hell of a situation that also helped shape where he ended up going in the next episodes. And he's had a hell of a few months or weeks uh, since this has all started going down. Is it too late for him to turn back? I mean, he may be stuck about that life and hitting licks since of what happened with him and Brains. Although it did go south and he ended up running his mouth and not following orders and causing this lady to lose her life. He may think, hey, the square life ain't for me no more. And all, now that he's done dirt himself, and now he knows what it's like to kill a man after killing Ray Ray, maybe he may say, you know what, maybe I do want to get into the family business. Maybe going to school and all of that is just not for me. Now, what I think is Tariq, although he did get accepted in the choke, is not going to work out for him. Now, I think he is going to end up going there. And I think he is going to get enrolled and, and start going to class and all of that good stuff. But I think it's just been so much going on with him. He's just a young, young man. He's not going to be able to handle and process all of the things that he's went through in the last few weeks. With the lady getting killed, with Jukebox dying, and then finally his sister being killed because of the things that he was involved in and the PTSD and him murdering Ray Ray and then being around pretty much a bunch of kids when he's pretty much grown up over overnight he's not going to be able to process and handle everything and in the end Ghost will be there over the shoulder watching and be there to help him process everything and he's going to come back home and he's going to try to want to get back into the family business, I believe. But Ghost is going to persuade him not to do so. He's going to try to convince him don't do that in season five. And I think in typical Tariq fashion, he's going to go around his back or do whatever it takes on the side to try to do so anyway. And it's going to cause more problems. We see he, he had treated his sister bad. He didn't really appreciate that she really loved him just because they were brother and sister. She loved him unconditionally. He pushed her on the floor, lightweight abused her, gave her the fingers, uh, didn't really want to, you know, appreciate or talk to her about any damn thing. And then in the end, uh, when she was there uh, trying to protect and stand up for him, he wasn't there for her when she was abused and the mama saw that and she gave that sad ass excuse about why she had that big ass bruise on her arm he was just looking to see if she was going to snitch on him that's all he was concerned about uh he he was just pretty much out for himself and we all remember he started texting about hitting the lick with brains right then and there while she was talking about getting out and going to the school when she was standing up for him uh, he wasn't there for her again. Uh, she was trying to protect him out of the kindness of her heart, not because of no money or anything like that. Now, I will give him a little credit in the sense that 
what the hell could he have really done? What, he could have screamed out, hey, Ray Ray, or anything, police, or whatever, but he could have, Ray Ray could have easily just grabbed the girl and put a gun to his head, her head, and said, hey, come here, or I'll shoot her, and then what could he have done? They would have both been killed. There was really no option for him to win, but sitting there looking stupid with that face like he just saw Mommy kissing Santa Claus or some shit, that was the wrong thing to do. Uh, he should have tried to give her more of a warning. or so, I, I mean, I don't know. It was a hell of a situation to be in for anybody. But in the end, he wasn't there for her. And she was outside for him. And she shouldn't have been there. I give her credit for that. But it cost her her life. And he didn't cry. He didn't scream her name or nothing. He just sat there and took a knee like he was taking a little... Uh, play from the coach in a Madden NFL or something. And anyway, the way he probably shouldn't have but did cope with that loss is by getting his lean on, get, turning to the sizzling. And a lot of people would probably turn to substance abuse or, you know, things of that nature if they experience something so traumatic. But he's just a young teenager. And so him doing that is going to just put his life in even more of a spiral out of control. Um, you see, when he was, if it wasn't for him trying to get that lean, he may not have ever been in that situation in the first place. Because the whole reason he was outside was he was trying to get some lean. Uh, from his girlfriend she was supposed to be giving him a refill uh, upgrading his prescription so to speak and so uh, she was out there he, he might blame all of this on her thinking she helped set him up or that she was working with Ray Ray and we don't know if he may try to take that out kill her or whatever the case I mean he's killed once and like they say if you killed once it's easy to kill again Ray Ray on the other hand he, he was out there trying to kill Tariq, and in the end, he didn't have to kill Raina. That was a bad move by the producers, but it was successful because it generated a lot of buzz, a lot of attention. The ratings went up, which is already a highly rated show, and so I think that might be key to what lies in the future. Back then, back again to Reek, that lean is something that's mean for him in the sense that after she was dead and they were at the wake the one thing he was doing was you know filling up that little solo cup he part of the solo cup crew getting that lean ready and while everybody was talking and trying to help him deal and help him cope with what was going on he was in the zone uh, he, he wasn't trying to hear none of that he was just uh, tweaked out and I mean, again, I'm gonna try to give him a little credit, play devil's advocate. What else could the little guy do? I mean, he ain't did nothing but mess up one thing after another. So what would he do? He he tried to go and confront Dre later about what was going on, and he was on that lean to the point where he even threatened to kill Dre. Now, some people think in season five, maybe Tariq will kill Dre. That would be a good thing to happen as far as the writers, but I don't think it would work that way because it would be too predictable now that Tariq is now an assassin. You know what I mean? That, that just don't make any sense. Uh, he barely got Ray Ray killed. He, he barely pulled that off by the, uh, by the skin of them lips. And so him starting to be able to take down major killers, major drug dealers and stuff, it just doesn't add up right, so I don't think that that would work out. That, that would kind of ruin the show and take away the believability that now he's just some yeah, MK Ultra assassin. Okay, now, what happened with him and his mother? Is she gonna go to jail for this boy? Like, really? Is she really gonna do that? How many mothers would go to jail for your son if you know what you know about Tariq? He lied to you in the car when he could have told you what was going on and you all could have handled it professionally. He's stole, He lies. He stole your weapon. And now he's got you framed for the murder. Uh, it's just so much stuff that he's done. And, and then what is Tariq going to do when he finds out that Tasha just as dirty as Ghost in the sense that she plotting and planning and scheming how to get out of the family uh, just like Ghost was with Angie except she trying to do it with 
Aquafina over here. And so now she's going to, what, take the money, take the family, try to leave, and what, screw over everybody, Ghost and, and him and his last of the Mo Motisa tribe sister. I mean, what's really going down? And so uh, he got them lips. He might blow her away too. But I doubt that. That's highly unlikely. Although he has lost a lot of respect for her. Uh, when he first came home, he look, he about as big as Ghost now. When he first came home after the jukebox incident, he was trying to wolf like the wolf of Wall Street all in her face. Talking about, you lied to my face. You a liar and this and that. Now, if I did that, and started yelling and screaming like that in my mama face, I would have got uh, a two-piece and a biscuit smacked upside the head so hard uh, before I even got finished uh, getting it out. And if I tried to pull a, a block move like he did, I would have got two more whoopings, the original whooping, and then I would have got the other ass whooping for thinking that I was a man and able to block it so she would have beat me like a man. And then another whooping just for even thinking about doing some shit like that. Now, they may have came back together because they bonded over burning uh, bogus uh shit that could have linked him to the crime his his clothes and stuff so now they may be a, a match made in crime again and uh like like mother like son like mother and father so who knows and as far as him and his daddy how, how is their relationship maybe their relationship is somewhat repaired now as well since he knows that his daddy was there for him i mean he should have forgiven his daddy anyway to a certain extent because his daddy was the one there for him when it was that jukebox situation rolling all around town trying to find him. His daddy was the one that was getting ready to take a bullet for him when Kanan had the gun pointed at him. That's his, his boy he looked up to, Kanan, that he thought so highly of. But Kanan had to let him know that he was running game on him. So, and then he was ready to shoot him. And, take, and in the end, he took their car and their money. Then Ghost, he was all he wanted to do was be there for Reek, be there for his son. He was ready to take a bullet for him, do whatever. Reek never said thanks, Dad. Never said I'm sorry. Never shed a tear. Never was any type of remorse. And that right there is warning signs uh, of a sociopath. Be able to do terrible things or be a part of terrible things and show no empathy, no emotion. Now, when uh, he was talking to them about uh, killing Ray Ray, and Ghost came in there, and they was he was making sure he was all right. He he was you know telling them how did you know? And he told about Dre, and he started to become more forthcoming with Ghost, and uh, he started to see that hey, Ghost and Tommy, Uncle Tommy, really do have his back. They really do care for him. I mean, hell. The first thing they did is came and rolled this brother up like a blunt because he already smoked him. So it's time to roll him up like a giant and uh, pass him out of, out of there. You know what I'm saying? And while we talking about Ray Ray and this whole situation of his death, let me get into this just a little bit. Now, it's a lot of theories about Ray Ray and his death more so than the JFK assassination. First off, Ray Ray ain't catch the bullet with his teeth like Bruce Leroy. He wasn't uh, no ninja. He also did not kill himself and then somehow, some way, placed the gun back on the table. That makes no sense at all. Why would he kill himself? He was getting ready to escape and leave town. If anything, he would have tried to kill Reek and then continue with his escape plan. Secondly, he didn't grab the gun and get a shot off, but then get shot by Reek and then somehow, some way, put the gun back on the table, and that's why the gun is turned. That just makes no sense at all. Who get? Why would he give a damn if the gun was back on the table if he got shot? It just doesn't make any sense. It's not plausible, okay? Especially putting it back in the damn near original spot. Also, there was no one else in that apartment. No one else knew about it. It was a trap house that he had set up uh, as an undercover agent. So no, Kanan was not there. Dre was not there. No one else was there. Tariq and Ray Ray were the only two people there, period. If anybody else was there, they could have tried to stop Tariq, talk to Tariq or anything, give Ray Ray a warning. 
but none of those people that people suggest was there even liked Ray Ray, so they wouldn't have helped Ray Ray, and they wouldn't have done that. If anything, if they were there, Tariq would have came in the house, and Ray Ray would have already been dead. Also, there was no gunman on the grassy knoll. That's why there's a bullet in the wall, and there was some magic bullet that passed through Ray Ray, or whatever the case. That's just not what happened, okay? And the reason that the gun is moved is because Ray Ray tried to grab the weapon, and he was shot by Tariq. And then, while he was shot, he just dropped the weapon, or he didn't get a good grip on the weapon. And that's why he didn't have proper control, and the gun is turned to the side a little bit and, and is sitting right there. That's the reason why. Also, Tariq shot Ray Ray at close range. And so if you were shot at close range, Ray Ray wasn't a large man. Being shot at close range gives a higher chance for the bullet to pass through him uh, and come out the other side. Okay. And so that's how the bullet was inside the wall. The first shot passed through Ray Ray and landed in the wall. The second shot that was heard shortly after was shot uh, was when Tariq shot Ray Ray in the head, which is why there's blood right there at his head while he's laying there on the ground. Tariq is not a crack shot. He wouldn't have been able to shoot Ray Ray in the head while he was moving, reaching for the weapon. He shot him in the body. Once he fell, he walked over and he executed Ray Ray. End of story. Ray Ray is dead, and that's how it was killed. As far as Tariq and Ghost and him joining the family business, I doubt that's going to happen. Um, that just seems highly unlikely, and it would just throw the show uh, totally in a different spin and angle than where it was going. I think Tariq may reconcile with Ghost and realize that, hey, he did love me, he do have my back, but of course he's going to keep messing up. As far as him and Uncle Tommy, I think as well, he's going to realize, hey, he has my back. He loves me. But in typical Tariq fashion, he's not going to completely trust them with all the information that he needs to. It's going to come back to bite him in some way, somehow. And it's going to hurt the family because he's not going to tell everything he needs to tell. And also, he may have reason to believe or do that because he remembers when he was talking with Tommy and he was asking him about what happened with uh, Kanan getting locked up and if he knew about it or if his dad had something to do with it or whatever the case, he kind of doesn't believe Tommy when in actuality Tommy didn't know about that until Kanan told him. So, Tommy didn't learn about that until later as well. Now... As far as how Tariq is going to deal with Kanan, is he going to get back together and look up to him? I doubt it. Now, he did contact Kanan to try to get the address of where Ray Ray was, but he didn't tell him, hey, this, that, and the other is why I'm looking for Ray Ray. He, he killed my sister. He didn't trust him enough to say that. Then he may end up blaming Kanan for all the stuff that happened as well, even though it's really his fault as much as it is Kanan's. Kanan got him on the scissor, he, he took him into the hood, showing him what's good, got him looking at all this different stuff and trying to sell sell Fat Alberts and uh, learning about what his daddy did and didn't do and uh, he introduced him to the life, got him dirty. He got him in the shoe store, stealing J's, uh, you know, committing uh, petty larceny and then uh, he had him on send off missions. And in the end, he had him brainwashed, thinking that that's the way to go. Yeah, them, them J's is nice, but in the end, uh, he didn't have to do that. I mean, his parents would have bought him anything he wanted, and he didn't realize that was a blessing. He was brainwashed to think that that was a chump move to have parents that love you and get you anything you want. He also is the one that introduced him to Ray Ray, and uh, he brought a new gun for Ray Ray. And uh, in the end, it was uh, a setup mission. Now, it wasn't a complete setup because it was really just a test. But also, he introduced him to Jukebox. He brought him into that whole circle of those dirty people. 
one tried to kidnap him, or they both tried to kidnap him, and the other tried to kill him, literally, and killed his sister. So he may blame Canaan for bringing him into that circle of uh, friends and introducing him to that. And yeah, he, he also has responsibility because he chose to be there. He the one kept going there and stuff. But they were like wolves in sheep's clothing, and he was green green as uh green beans so he didn't know what he was doing and even when uh canaan put that crispy cream ass arm all crunchy and crackly coon arm all around him uh while he was passed out uh he didn't understand that yeah they really were trying to kidnap him and uh he he didn't have an idea of what's going on and nobody had his back and the only person that could have been there for him is dre Dre knows what's going on, okay? He could have told him and gave him a heads up, or rather a nose up on what, what the situation was, but he didn't. And so, who should he blame more, Kanan or Dre? Dre had somewhat of an obligation of loyalty to him. I mean, although he's a kid, so I mean, how deep could the loyalty go? Also on the same side, he's a kid. So he was innocent. He should have had loyalty to him. And Kanan and Dre and Reek. The only person that knew that Dre was lying all the damn time is Reek. And I wonder why. Because birds of a feather flock together. Reek is just a big ass liar just like Dre. And all the lies that Dre always told. Reek the only one that kind of saw through some of them. Uh, he didn't see through all of them because he still is a kid and a lot of this stuff was coming a uh, 100 miles a minute, 100 miles and running and he didn't know what the hell to do. And the jukebox situation, he learned right then for a fact out of the horse's mouth that he was running game on him. Kanan didn't give a damn about him. Jukebox made Kanan tell him the truth. And so... You know this dude ain't really your friend deep down. Because all the good times you had and all the shit you did, all he was doing was trying to run game on you to get back at your daddy to run, get money off your daddy. So why would you continue to hang with him? He killed Jukebox, but that was more because he was pissed that she made him give up his secrets. He was more pissed about her running her mouth. Not because he was trying to save him. He left. He left him and his daddy stranded with no ride, no money, no nothing. So how could you really think this guy is a good guy? Especially when it's going to confuse the hell out of him when he sees his daddy, his Uncle Tommy, and Kanan, buddy, buddy, all riding around together now trying to make things happen. If he sees that, that's going to really throw his young mind for a loop. Because one thing with kids is they still are in the mind state of things are either good or bad. I have this conversation with my son a lot and I have to tell him life is not always like that. It's not black and white. It's a lot of gray areas. Good people sometimes do bad things and bad people sometimes do good things. And so uh, these three guys are all bad but have done good things. Does that mean they're good or bad? It's a very confusing situation that I'm sure he's not able to understand and, and decipher through. And then also, is he going to really put in the work to, to be there for the Motisa tribe, the last of the Motisa tribe? I mean, she's innocent. Uh, you know, that's little Zeke Zeke. What is he going to do for little Zeke Zeke? He going to really be there for her? Uh, he should just stay away from her because it's clear he don't know how to be a big brother. Uh, he probably has a little more skills to protect her now as far as give her game and teach her about being around dudes and, and the game and the street life. But what is she going to think of him when she realizes that Raina is dead partly because of his fault? I'm sure they'll probably never tell her the truth and she's so young she'll probably never find out. And then what is he going to do? Is he going to have a come to Jesus moment? When he goes there to, to Raina's homecoming with TD Fakes and he start hooping, hollering, talking about, and if loving the Lord is wrong, I don't want to be right. Is that going to really uh, make Tariq say, Amen? 
And so, uh, who knows, man? Uh, Tariq probably ain't going to hear all of that. He, he probably going to be uh, in his feelings. He ain't going to be trying to listen to all of that. And I think it would be highly unlikely if that message got through to him at this young point in his career. And uh, not career, but young point in his life. And uh, I think he going to probably be more about Pastor Cavassier. Or better yet, uh, give me that lean with it, rock with it. And uh, I think that's what he's going to be trying to cope with more than anything. If anything, he probably already uh, had that gangster lean going when he walk up in there. And uh, so chances are he's not going to have a come to Jesus moment. And lastly, here's the, the, the one that's going to throw everybody for a loop. It's Councilman Tate. Now we all starting to realize that Councilman Tate is dirty like a pair of four day old drawers that a man takes off and kicks up under the bed right before he had love with a new woman. But in the end, how dirty is he? Now, Ghost has already showed way too much and, and gotten in too deep with Councilman Tate as it is. He got in deeper than he got in too deep like Jay Reed with God. Okay? And he's brought him in his house. And he's seen Tariq. Now, Tariq has already been used as a pawn in this chess game that we watch called Power. Now, what will Councilman Tate do with him? I think this is how we're going to see Councilman Tate become more hated than Dre. Because he, when, the, when the ish really hits the fan, he's going to use Tariq against Ghost. Okay? And... He even when he looks down on Ghost, he's so short, he still got to look up to him, which is crazy. How much leverage does he really have on Ghost? I mean, how does he keep sunning Ghost and trying to check Ghost when all he did was help him get a little money on that contract from Stern? I mean, damn, how much money was that? Multiple millions? They didn't let all of us know how much money it was exactly because then we would justify his actions and say all that stuff he doing ain't no way in the world ghost would be listening to him and talking about is that clear and checking him and doing all of that when all he did was help him get a, a few you know hundred thousands or whatever and as far as ghosts it still wouldn't mean enough because all of that was symbolic like stern told him let me go and sign this symbolic check for you meaning yeah on paper, it looked like you got more, but in reality, I'm not giving you a damn thing because you in my pocket. You already owe me, and you're going to pay like you weigh. Now, Ghost already made the deal even when he started watching out for the Fonz uh, and seeing, uh, making sure that his days was happy on the block. Now, how in the world does Councilman Tate still maneuver and position that into more favors i mean damn how much does he really owe him there you go again trying to look down on him but at the same time looking up at him what the hell is that man a little mighty mouse ass dude he need to go ahead and check him put him on punishment to make him go sit in the corner man then you listening to him he need to do his due diligence and find out what the hell is he really about to have the balls to come and do that. He might be small, but his nuts are big because he don't have no problem coming to try to face to face with ghosts and try to check him. I mean, the way he talks to ghosts, it seems like he got ghosts in his pocket like spare change. I mean, he must really be in the game deep, like deeper than the coochie of a chick six feet because the way he talks, it seems like he got so much pull, so much reach that he could just have Ghost and Tommy touched anytime he wants. Now, due to Tariq and all his actions and everything, he's brought his daddy down. He's brought Tommy. Well, you can't bring Tommy too much down. I mean, Tommy stay in, in drama and stay dirty like uh, muddy waters. So uh, Tommy loved that shit. But he's brought ghosts back into the life, murdering and killing when he was trying to avoid all of that. He's also brought his mama down. All she was trying to do was pay the water bill with Aquafina ass head, uh, Terry. And now she's looking at possibly going to jail because of Tariq 
and the reason why is because guns and ballistics and yeah she may have uh they may have picked up the shell casings and they may have gotten the uh fingerprints because the shell casings have the fingerprints but because her gun was confiscated police when they confiscate weapons they do ballistic tests by shooting the bullets and then they keep those bullets and then they inventory them because each gun chamber has unique uh markings in it so that when the bullet comes out if they are able to recover that bullet whole they can match that same bullet up to other bullets that are found in similar crimes or whatever the case and so it's only a matter of time when they match up that bullet in the wall that passed through terry with the bullet that was fired from her gun and that's all thanks to Tariq. now the finale of what i think is going to be happening to Tariq in season five is i think Tariq's going to be killed I really think Tariq's going to be killed in season five. He's going to have a few ups and downs. It's going to seem like he's trying to make good and he learned his lesson. Then he's going to go through a couple more fuck ups for a minute. His mom is going to go through jail and different things for a while. He's going to be stressed out, mess up and choke. And eventually he's going to try to somehow, some way kill Dre or which I don't think is going to be more likely. I think he's going to be kidnapped or somehow used as leverage or a pawn on Ghost through Councilman Tate, and he's going to be killed. And they have learned their lesson from season four of what happens when a child star of the show was killed from Raina, and they're going to re capture that magic when they kill Tariq people will be happy people will be sad regardless people will watch and it will garner more ratings and more attention and everything and from what I've read and what I've seen when 50 renegotiated that deal it was for an additional season of power meaning that it will go to six seasons and so after season five and Reek is dead, they're going to show Ghost going all out. And it's going to be a final showdown with him and Councilman Tate. And we'll have to see how that plays out in season six. But they will kill Tariq in season five towards the end. Uh, and it will be a bittersweet moment for everyone. The music that you're listening to is provided by the passion hi-fi you can find his music on soundcloud also follow me on twitter follow me on facebook message me hit me up at patreon.com forward slash j more reviews the links are located down below and also look at these other reviews that i have located right here you may find something that you missed. You may find something else that you may like. In the end, thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel. Peace. And I'll see you in the next video.